welcome to another episode of Foul Ball Area. I am Matthew Atkins. Thank you for tuning in on this lovely Sunday afternoon, or whenever you're choosing to listen to the podcast. Thank you for listening. As always, I'm going to remind you that you can listen on iTunes. If you have an iTunes account and you use it, feel free to search the Foul Ball Area podcast, subscribe to it, download it, listen to it, and leave a reply or a review and leave a review. Share it with your friends if you think that they would enjoy the podcast. I don't know who wouldn't enjoy it. Something new that I'm trying today is a video podcast. Um, I'm doing the normal audio recording, but I have a camera here in front of me, and I am recording video of the podcast that we will put up on a RCBL YouTube channel, which is soon to come. So that's something new that I'm trying. I think it'll be cool. I'd like to know what you guys think, though. So if you feel so inclined to leave a comment, please do that. If you are watching the video version of the podcast and you see this Yankees sticker up here on my laptop, please don't judge me. It's a Pulaski Yankees sticker. I worked for them last summer, so I am not a New York Yankees fan. Now, the first thing that I'm going to talk about today, I feel like I have a pretty... Uh, pretty good podcast today. I know I say that every time, but I feel like this is a pretty packed one. Weighted on base average. If you've listened to the podcast for a while, you would know that I think it was my second episode was all about sabermetrics. My friend Trey Lyle joined me and we talked about sabermetrics and we determined that us, you know, as students who have other things going on in our lives besides our journalism duties, looking at stats is the best way for us to evaluate players and especially you know me I don't have the the in-depth baseball analysis that someone like Mike Bocock has when he joins us I don't have that kind of in-depth baseball analysis so I usually turn to stats when I'm when I am evaluating a player and so weighted on base average according to fan graphs is pretty much the best stat to use when you evaluate a player's offensive capabilities. What it does is it assigns a weight to each way of reaching base, a hit by pitch, walk, single, double, triple, home run. It assigns a weight to each way of reaching base, and then it adds all that up, divided by plate appearances, and you have your weighted on base average. So in the county league, you know, our stats online don't really go that in depth we have the basic batting average home runs doubles triples stuff like that we don't even have on base percentage on the point streak stats so i decided to do the math today which if you know anything about communication students and journalism students math is not one of our strong suits but i did the math anyway and i found out that the leaders in weighted on base average for the rockingham county baseball league i don't have my stat sheet with me i left it at Bridgewater at the baseball field this evening. I don't have it with me, but I know that among the leaders were Tanner Morris of Stewart's Draft, Tyler Bocock of Bridgewater, and Austin Nicely of Grottos. And those are three of the best players in the league this year. We knew that before looking at the weighted on base average, but after looking at that, we can confirm that these are three of the best offensive players. Fangraphs provides a guide on see, to see what a good weighted on base average is and they have according to fan graphs if you have a 400 weighted on base average that's an excellent player all three of these batters are above 500 so either i did my math wrong or these are just really good ball players it's just something to think about another stat to look at if you're into stats and sabermetrics like i am on Saturday night, last night, I had the pleasure of joining Mike Bocock and Mario Retrosi at Ray Heatwell Field as the Bridgewater Reds took on the Clover Hill Bucks. It was a special Saturday night edition of RCBL Baseball on ESPN 1360 WHBG. Uh, it was looking to be a good game. You know, these are two pretty close teams, uh, two rivals. Clover Hill has a lead, about a four and a half game lead, I think, in the West division right now over the Bridgewater Reds. They're the two 
most championship. They're the two teams in the league with the most championships all time. Um, so you know it should have been a good game. Two rivals fighting for the lead in the West. Clover Hill now. They won the game ten to four, and they have now won fourteen straight games. They are seventeen and two so far this season. Beat Bridgewater ten to four tonight. It was it was a good game to watch. Bridgewater started out hot. They got three straight singles. Kevin Bocock singled, Tyler Bocock singled, and Corbin Lucas singled before Brian Bocock came up and drove them all in with a grand slam. So four batters, and it was four to nothing. After that, Corey Armantrout, the starting pitcher for Clover Hill, shut down Bridgewater. He is the league leader in wins and strikeouts this season. He now has 68 strikeouts on the season. He added 11 to his total tonight. He had 57 going into the game, now has 68, leads the league, and he has six wins. He's 6-0, and leads the league leads the league in that category. I did a little bit of research during the game looking at the point streak database from previous seasons. Corey Armantrout also led the league in strikeouts last year with 47, and he already has 68 this year. The previous year he led the, he led the the previous year he led the league in strikeouts with 57. It might have been 58. I think it was 58. So Corey Armantrout is the strikeout king in the RCBL right now 68 on the season so far and counting and Clover Hill is rolling 17 and 2 14 game win streak first place in the west they are the team to beat that's not to say they can't be beaten like I've been saying when the playoffs roll around there's going to be some good baseball anybody can beat anybody Clover Hill right now would be the top seed but there's a very real chance that they could be beaten in the playoffs before they reach the finals. I'm not making any predictions right now. I don't know if I'm going to make any predictions. <clears throat> okay. So as I'm going along with this podcast, uh, I'm realizing that I'm having some issues with the video camera. So we'll see if that works out. I know early in the podcast episode... I said there would be a video portion to this episode, but we will see how that pans out. Hopefully, I can get it to work. It might be shorter than the actual audio podcast. It might just be a little clip of the podcast that is in video format. We'll see. You'll know by the time I post this. On Friday night was the RCBL game of the week. Montezuma Braves at Grotto's Cardinals at Shiflet Field in Grotto's. I joined Carl Magenhofer and Mike Bocock for that game, and that was a fun game. It was a close game, 3-2. to two. Montezuma took the win over Grados. Grados is currently in second place in the east behind Stewart's draft. That is a close race. I think Grados is two games behind. Montezuma is in third place in the west. So, Montezuma and Grados was a good matchup. Uh, like I said, Montezuma took the win, 3-2. to two. They scored one run in the first, another in the third, and then they scored a run in the seventh inning on a balk by Grotto's pitcher Ryan Leak, and that is how they won the game. We had some fun broadcasting that game. We talked a little bit about the music that Grotto's was playing over their PA system. At one point, Body Like a Back Road by Sam Hunt came up. I think it was Adam Doffmeyer's walk-up song for Grotto's. And I said I'm not a fan of the song. Carl Magenhofer pointed out to me that it is the number one song in the country and asked how I can not be a fan of the song and then proceeded to call me a music critic, which I, you know, yeah, I am a music critic because I like good music. So I said don't even get me started on Sam Hunt right now because we don't have time for that. We've got a ball game to broadcast. If I were to sit here and talk about my music preferences and my disdain for Sam Hunt, it would be the longest podcast episode that I have put out. So we're not going to do that right now. Just know that I like good music. If Sam Hunt comes up as your walk-up song, I will judge you. We also talked about the food around the county league. Um, We are going to do a podcast episode about food in the county league because there is some good food out there. Some of these concession stands have some really good food. So look for that episode in the coming weeks. 
Another thing we talked about was the all hair team in the RCBL. Right now it's only got two players on it. Those two players are Brandon Lambert from Montezuma and Reed Ensminger from Newmarket. Both of them have very nice hair. They got the baseball flow going. Kind of like Jason Wirth or Bryce Harper out there. So, the all here team, food, music, that's what we talked about when we were supposed to be broadcasting a baseball game the other night in Grottos. Next week's game of the week is in Montezuma as the New Market Shockers head to the Raritan Park there in Montezuma to take on the Braves. So there you go, the two players that are on the all here team, Reed Ensminger and Brandon Lambert, will be facing each other. Should be a good matchup. We'll be on the radio ESPN 1360 and 101.3 WHBG. One last thing before we end this episode of Foul Ball Area. The 8, 9, and 10-year-old Little League State Tournament is being played in Bridgewater this week. The District 3 representative is Elkton Little League. I went out there and watched their game this morning. I got a call from Mike Bocock around 9.50. I was still asleep. He left a voicemail, said that Elkton plays at 10.30. I woke up, it was 10.30, so I'd got dressed, poured myself a cup of coffee, and drove out to Bridgewater to watch this Little League game. Elkton almost put off the comeback. It was 10-6. to 6, No, it was 11-6 to 6 going into the sixth inning. They only play six innings at this level. And Elkton pulled within one run. The final score was 11-10. to 10. It was a good game. You know, baseball is baseball. I watch it at any level, even Little League. And uh, I caught up with Elkton's coach, John Hindle, after the game, and these are his thoughts on the tournament and his team overall. What kind of strategy goes into coaching at the Little League level? Um, like in tournament play, it's you've got number of pitches you can throw with days rest. You have, we've been playing with 12, so you have to get every batter has to hit one time, play two consecutive innings to meet mandatory play time for Little League. So that makes a big like difference in who you put in when, who, where you put in and actually who you start because you don't want to have to sub everybody all at once then bring them in and out. How far have you guys been in this tournament before? To my knowledge, this is the first time we've had a team, a 9 and 10 team here for eight years, I think. And they didn't win it within our 13th, 15 in, I think, 2000. 10, 2011 won states. What's next for your team after today's game? We play again tomorrow at 5.30. Do you know who you'll be playing yet? We play South Loudon. Okay. Um, pitching is, Mike, I was talking to Mike while he was here. He said pitching is really big at this level, but you know, there's a lot of limitations like pitch count. And I don't know, are they even allowed to throw any other kinds of pitches besides fastball? Uh, yeah, they can, throw, they can throw anything they want. Okay. so. How does pitching factor into the game from what you've seen? If it, it's the biggest part if you have kids that can throw strikes, uh, move the ball inside, outside, high, low. If you're throwing it straight down the middle the whole time, it's usually not doesn't end up good for the kids. Do you think your players were excited to you know, be able to play here kind of close to their hometown absolutely. as opposed to traveling? Oh, yeah, absolutely. And we've had a really good draw. Every game we've had, we've had the most people here. And the kids feed off all the people here cheering them on. All right, thank you. Thank you. So that was Elkton's John Hindle on his Little League team playing in the state tournament. They play again today, Sunday, at 5.30. And then I'm not sure when they will play after that. I think this will be the last game of pool play. Then they'll get into the tournament-style play. So that's all I have for you on this episode of Foul Ball Area. Thank you for joining me. For the first video episode that I've done, we'll see how it turned out. Remember to subscribe and download the podcast on iTunes if you feel so inclined, or keep listening on SoundCloud. Either way is fine, as long as you're listening. And that's all I have for you today. I'm Matthew Atkins.